Like a moth to a flame, it pulls us in. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all begins again. But where we're needed, we will go. And I will. Adam with Demi Plane, and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Heroes of the Plains. You probably hear my beagle in the background. He is very excited about something, and uh, it, it's probably watching this show. I'm sure it's on the television in there, and he is just super excited, like I'm sure all of you are. Thank you for joining us. Call out to a couple of our sponsors here tonight. First of all, returning sponsor for the stream, Talon and Claw. They make fine, made out of wood products. Dice vaults, DM screens, all kinds of goodies for your table. So check them out. You can get a discount code that you'll see in chat there that will uh, get you, I think, 10% off any purchase there. And so check that out in chat. And we're going to have a giveaway a little bit later tonight, too. So stay tuned in chat. All of the details, our community manager, Megan, will be in there helping everybody navigate through the giveaway. We also have Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, which is an incredible idol clicking game that uh, has so many of the Heroes of the Plains in it now. And Orkira went in this week. This week, Orkira went in, so you can snag her right now. And there also is an Electrum Chest code that you can pick up on the screen so take that or grab it from chat and redeem that for an electrum code uh chest code or electrum chest words are working somehow for me today and then finally we have sirenscape you'll hear the music and sound tonight is from sirenscape epic games need epic sound i think that is everything i want to save as much time as we can to get into whatever craziness is about to happen here tonight turning it over to you todd Okay, so previously on Heroes of the Plains, you all got snagged by the Norn and were faced in a basic, basically a interdimensional prison lineup faced with multiple versions of yourselves from different dimensions. Uh, everyone was told to raise their hand to show their affiliation with here, whether they were with Heroes of the Plains or Beyond Villains or who knows what. You were amongst multiple groups of yourselves. You were then brought before the Norn and a very pushy pamphlet person. Um, and you were told that uh, for all your offenses, which there were many, lots of casting of wish, resetting the timeline, looking at you, Penelope Half Pint, uh, all of these various either world ending events or multiverse shattering events that you have done, you could get away from your prison sentence if you just acquire some of the variant versions of yourself and bring them back to the Norn so that they can kind of reweave the weave and make everything good again. Uh, or Kara Eldrex decide, nope. Fireballed Idrisil, the world tree, the thing that holds up reality as we know it, as you do, uh, nice. and banished all her friends. All the friends of we're pre pretty much banished. The last one standing was Briv, who decided to stay, and that's when he came into uh, some very important knowledge for the rest of the group. Everyone appeared in Waterdeep, but the statues in Waterdeep are moving. The sun is about to come up. The city looks destroyed, and outside the city is a sea of undead. It looks very familiar to all of you. And above, far, far above in the sky, is a giant ancient golden dragon. Bearing some resemblance to Orkira Eldrex in some ways. And that's where our adventure begins. 
Uh, did that, 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 that dragon just talk like Orkira? Did you hear that? I swear I just heard her say one problem at a time. Uh, I heard that as well. I'm sure it's just a thing that, I'm, I can't be the only person that says that, right? Thou art the only person I have ever heard say that. Okay, but that doesn't mean that other beings don't say that, right? Hey, Freely, how quick can we get out of here? Ah, uh, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, uh, Briv, didn't you mention something about finding ourselves or something? You were talking, but a lot was happening, and I was piloting in a lithid ship, and, uh, what, what, what was that? That sounded far too self-help for something that I would say. I do not typically try to find myself, but what? the Norns did say that we must take, and you say that I have just like metal coming out of my fingertips and bracelets on the on the metal, and, and I'm just handing it out. These bracelets are something that we are supposed to place on our duplicates that shall make it to where we can take them back to the Norns, because if we take them back to the Norns, reality shall be fine. It shall no longer be kind of tearing down around us and i forget most of the other details but i think that we are supposed to capture knock out and return all of our oh. duplicates what? okay wait 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 orkira orkira uh hear me out um before we go before we go um i have brought multiple versions of you back to life and if there's another version of you that is in trouble i feel like we have to at least try and help her hopefully not knock out and imprison an ancient gold dragon akira but we have to try i'm happy to help but i don't trust anything about what those norns are talking about uh they didn't give us hardly an explanation about anything and i mean look if we remove whoever this is then this entire city is going to fall to the city of the dead but I, I don't have to trust the norm. I trust you. And I point at Orkira and I hit her with message. Which one? The real, or, the, the dragon Orkira. Not the real, real Orkira. one. The oh, <laughs> oh, no. Orkira has released. Well, now I know where I stand. Fine. Wow, that's not even a microaggression. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just nine minutes I mean, in and already I'm dead. I'm like, one of you is the size of a 747. You know, size matters. Um, <laughs> I, I, I hit her with message and I just say, Orkira, is that you? Um, yes, go away. I don't want to talk to you. Well, I, I mean, do, do you know who I am? It's, it's Freely. Hi. I have Hello. no idea who you are. No, this is us in the Mind Flayer ship. I know. Please don't destroy it. We're, we're here to help you. You're, you're a Mind Flayer? It's... Ah, uh, I mean, not anymore. I'm, Wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over to Freely, and I'm going to gently tap him on the shoulder. I'm going to say, this is a different version of me. It's possible this version of me split off before I met you. I Talk about the others. Throw the ship in gear. I mean, realistically, this is a space vessel. There's no reason why it would have external speakers, but does it? <laughs> does it have gears? I mean, no, I... it's a stick ship. The lifted <laughs> crab, everybody knows. The sticky clutch, sticky clutch. Wow, really, there, your drifting is amazing. There is a crashed Mind Flayer ship in the street at this moment on top of, a, of a, what looks like a loose assembly of giant parts. Um, oh, I thought that, like that the giant parts or leaving. giant mechanical parts for the ship. Giant part, well, a giant who is now in several parts that oh, had been sewn together. Right. That was yes. the worst option. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, is is the is the ship currently inoperable? Uh, it's there's steam, there's smoke coming out of it, but uh, it, it depends. You might be able to repair it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this one of those good news, bad news type things. Uh, good news. Um. Okay, it's not really any good news. Bad news, the ship is probably uh, messed up. Good news, maybe Whittle and I can fix it. Uh, yeah, I don't think know, we can go it, just If it's yet. got the same uh, basic mechanics as Storm Herald, I think we could figure this out. So, just a thought. If we are in the timeline that I think we are in, um, we may have bigger problems. I mean, bigger than an army of the undead? Mm-hmm. 
because if we are when I think we are, well, where I think we are, this is around the time after we went to see the Cibriex. Well, it has to be. I mean, Saranthus. Well, oh, hey, hey, hey. no, I remember Saranthus. It would Good seem times. Perhaps. <laughs> I just look at Penelope and I'm like, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 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 well, okay. Competing with the god? Perhaps something we should plan for? No, we've done that lots of time. Okay, wait, all right. I think maybe Whittle and I try and get this thing flying again, and you guys figure mm -hmm. out what's up with Orkira. Uh, Whittle is going to find... Which Orkira? If, the, if the, there's like a... a piloting station that has some mind flayer tentacles um she'll try to find that oh yeah yeah you can easily find that yeah you you've been a, a, aboard a, a mind flare ship before mm, and okay. yeah yeah so Crosses. Crosses. really let's see what would uh let's see uh so what'll give me i guess arcana but okay. this is a very specific kind of arcana uh, that will be your equivalency. I don't have a we don't have a specific mind flayer ship skill in D D right now. <laughs> I feel like the game is the lesser for it. Until Spelljammer's confirmed. Yes. <laughs> Until we confirm <laughs> Spelljammer. He just said Spelljammer in, confirmed out loud. In, Again, it, it happened. In my mind it's already confirmed. So if you uh, say it three times fast, <laughs> it becomes confirmed. <laughs> uh uh, uh freely are you using the help action? Uh how how do you imagine Whittle that you're trying to repair the ship? Yeah, I mean, you tell me. She's the engineer. I just was a mind player, so <laughs> to, to help. You both have like a solid. Uh, you both both roll with advantage. Oh, thank you. I'm just indiscriminately applying mending. It... Yeah, I imagine like what is your flavor of repairing freely as opposed to uh, Whittle's. You know, it's, it's, style of repairing something. I think he's surprisingly effective, but it seems like he's not thinking about it at all. Like he's like random panels, like putting them back where they're supposed to be, mending. Mm. <laughs> like runs over and just like hey, mending, and then like, but he he knows how this is supposed to work instinctively. That's how that elder brain works, yo. I just know things. And Whittle Whittle pulls down one of the um the mind flayer tentacles and motions over to Freely so that he can mend that because there's one that's kind of split open. I, I am assuming this is going to take a little while, though, Todd, uh, because if it is, Briv is walking outside to try to talk to the dragon. Yeah, yeah, it's easily going to be an hour. Uh, the sun goes up, and you do see that the dragon, it's still flying around when you walk out, but seems to be now heading out. Uh -oh. Wait, where art thou going? Yeah, we need to get her, right? We gotta put the bracelet on her. If you, if you guys keep Keep yelling! The, the, the dead are gonna find you. Stop! The I sun's coming up. You'll be safe. Dead. I, I need thee to come down here where we can bonk you on the head and wrap you up in this no. bracelet and take you to the world tree. No, this sounds like some kind of trickery. This sounds like it's some not kind a trick. Trickery I told stuff. you I don't trust. exactly what we are doing. I don't. Okay. Can do I? Can do I, you I trust me? that or Kira in on on group chat on telepathic group chat? Uh, was what, what was that spell? Uh, it is uh, telepathic bond. Rare is telepathic oh. bond. Okay. Uh, does it have to be willing? Uh, yes. No. Okay. Yeah. She wanted us to stop yelling. You had message just like I do, though. I mean, you can. I you do can have message. Yeah. I can send message, but yeah. message has a limit on range, and telepathic bond doesn't. I am familiar with water deep. Do I see where this dragon is going? Uh, you see it heading, it appears to be the castle ward. Okay. Is it, is it heading for Mount Waterdeep or is it heading for what is left of castle It's heading Waterdeep? for the mountain. Okay. Can I see the mountain from here? And can I tell, is it still just a regular mountain or is it now something like a layer? Uh, it's uh, it, it's hard, too hard to tell. It doesn't really like with with how you're perceiving it. It looks exactly the same as it used to. Okay. Yeah. 
Do we want to wait for the two of them to fix the ship, and then we can go try no, to talk? No, we, we, we go, need we to go. huzzah. Why? We need to. We need to buy them time. Yeah. Buy them time for what? I really just do not want to sit around here for yeah. an entire hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'd be surprised how much you can get done in an hour by just saying it's been an hour. It's true. <laughs> Oh, she's gonna, she's gonna she's gonna cast summon montage. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is, if while there's daylight, it's safe, and we need to have this ship ready to go as soon as possible, then maybe we should help the two of them, and then we can all go try to talk to that dragon together. Are you saying you're afraid of yourself? No, I'm saying I don't want to go talk to that dragon, no matter who they are, and I'm hoping once the ship is together that we will just go, because I still don't trust the Norn at all. It sounds like you're afraid of a lot of things right now. <laughs> yeah? Wouldn't you be? No. You're not afraid of removing the one creature that seems to be keeping this entire city safe? I, I'm not smart enough to be afraid of things. Huzzah! Yeah. <laughs> this is this is why I spent a lot of time running after all of you. I'm just very, not smart enough just, to get us out well. of the problem. Inside the sh inside the ship, a, cl a clockwork fist goes up in solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> it's right through the porthole. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. If this is going to take an hour, Briv the Bold shall take a rest, not a long rest, but a rather short one. Okay. Uh, Briv. A thought. I kind of step aside and kind of pull Briv aside. You can detect good and evil, can you not? I can. Would you mind doing so? Where? Well, it gives you the, the, the radius around you, correct? Uh, thou art saying right here where we stand? Yes. I see, I see all of thee right here. Yes. So thou dost suspect someone here is evil? I have concerns about Strantis. And we <laughs> Thou dost control. think that Penelope is Saranthus again? No, and I would like to find out. Ooh. Yeah, Penelope, I wanna know too. Do it, do it, do it. Penelope Arthas so Saranthus. I have taken Briv away from everyone to do this. Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to have this well, conversation. Briv was still being way. pretty loud, uh, just <laughs> as an FYI. But um uh, okay, very very well, I shall do it. And then I am going to detect and you know basically this is not like maybe the catch-all that we always think that it is but um, <laughs> um but wow. um, it's named so wrong for what it really is it's it's it, 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 it lets you find uh celestial fiends undead yes. celestial fey fiends yeah with, within uh yeah. 60 feet and so i start i am looking for good and I am looking for evil. That evil might not be thee, Penelope, but I am looking just to us, be frankly. sure. It could be. It could be, be. It could be me. Could be what us. if it's me? If Let's I not... were to evil, then I shall lie about the results of mine divine sense. <laughs> You're not a very good liar. My concern is perhaps each of these is one of the iterations of wish that we've cast. Ah. Do I detect any evil I as thought? I do a walkabout around the no, ship? No, no. You see the, the, the sea of undead start to move as the sun, like move away as the sun starts going up. Um, they're, they're clustering in shadow. They're digging into the dirt and burying themselves. Uh, it's kind of very disturbing. You can almost feel the vibration of it. And the walking statues are still moving from block to block above you these massive statues of water deep are they fighting they are crushing undead as they're scurrying away for houses and for the sewers or the, wait about... the walking statues are are running away no the walking statues are crushing undead that are running from them oh oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah yeah or here has been long enough in water deep to know who is responsible for activating the walking statues and she's usually at Castle Waterdeep. Uh, would <sighs> I'm trying to figure out whether she would know to go there or not. Mm. 
Whittle and uh, Freely, I need another uh, check, Arcana check with advantage. But that first one, I got nearly the best Freely could hope for it, a 19. Yep. Mm -hmm. This and is an ongoing 17. repair. Uh, okay, no, but the luck is still on his side. Uh, I'm currently at, at 18. Okay. Not bad. I got a 25. Okay. And remember, let us know uh, if you get a 1 or a 20 on the die, that will cause chaos multiversal okay. like, like we need the dice to do that uh orkira's gonna walk up to alindra and say alindra uh, i know you do a lot of study everywhere I, I i was here for a while but there was so much going on there's someone who controls the walking statues do you remember hearing about that ha would i have known about that? i probably would have heard about that yeah you would know my that. research yes yes um maybe we should find them at least at the same time, or first, they can give us some answers that aren't directly related to an alternate version of me. Certainly. And they, they're they at Castle Waterdeep in this case? I I don't know, I don't and I don't know think Orkira would what know. what version of Waterdeep this is, and I was not here for the Waterdeep episode. So. I, I rely on your expertise here, on where they are, or DMs telling me where what i would know in this case yeah i mean i feel like you would know the hi the history of it then we should head to castle water Deep. do you want to tell everyone about what we're going to do and who we're going to see uh i mean all i know is that there's somebody that controls them and so i figured we'd go talk to them because they could fill us in on what's going on especially if if all of you are really intent on trying to get this dragon to not be here anymore. Uh, however you want to do that. To bonk them on the head and wrap them in this bracelet. Well, if you would like to remove the main protector from this city that's keeping it from falling, then maybe we should probably warn the person who's going to be left behind. Wait, that that did not seem like what was happening. We well, just think that the dragon protects the city? Yes. Didn't you this, see? This mish, I thought the walking statues were doing that job. They're doing some of it, but there's an ancient golden dragon flying around the we edges. We cannot take the only protector of the city away from the city. I don't care what these Norns have to say about it. Well, that's what I'm figuring. This is why I'm kind of against whoever this dragon is, us removing them. Wait, wait, Briv wait. drops the bracelets on the ground. I wonder okay. if there's a way to convert. <laughs> they clank on the ground. The dragon ward, using the technology that was used to keep the undead out of Elturel. That's going to be up your alley, I don't know. What don't is know. an Elturel? It, it was the city that fell into Avernus. Or Kara, give, uh, you have a, what's your passive perception? <laughs> I'm like, they free. <laughs> my I, pass, my oh, passive perception is a 28. Yeah, I you know, see, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, please, sorry, no, no, you go, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you, you see in the street, uh, about 60 feet away, a very familiar roguish looking human. Like, I see Voss? Yes, you see Voss. Uh, I'm... Just regarding all of you, strangely. Just standing out in the middle of nowhere? Yes, like, very right visible. in the middle of the street. All right. Oh, that's so unlike him in every way, shape, and form. Okay, I'm gonna look at everybody and say... I see someone I recognize, but I don't know if they're going to recognize me. Um, would you watch my back? Because he's kind of scary and deadly. And I'm going to try um, to... Would you prefer a blessing or guidance? I'd prefer just you watching my back in case he stabs Fair it. Enough. He's very good come, at that. I shall come with thee. Okay, just don't don't be... Try not to be threatening, because he's very scary and will just... Perhaps like. should stay back with hard us for me it. not to be threatening. I know you're very good at it, and it's super impressive, but I trust you. I'm going to go walk towards Voss and wave and be like, hi. Yeah, you see this. her out after her. You see this, uh, this man who seems to be in like some form of studded leather armor, as well as a long coat and a silver blade with blonde hair with dark roots uh, and uh, some climbing gear on them as well as a dagger at their belt as you slowly walk up to this kind of shadowy figure um, I want one more roll just a 1d20 from both Whittle and uh, Freely 
as okay. this is happening. That's a 15. It's sliding away from me. <laughs> uh, I got a 14. Diminishing returns. Diminishing returns. <laughs> He's trying so hard, though. Yeah, weird things happen. Like, every once in a while, a tentacle, like, erupts out of the wall, and you have to, like, slap it away, and it, like, reinserts itself into the wall again. And you're, you, you've gotten used to, like, the, the, the weirdness of all of this. Uh, another point, Whittle, you, you hit one of the two strings that you attach trying to repair it, and you wink out of existence. <laughs> And you find yourself uh, in the frost fell for no reason on another crashed spell jammer. And then you reappear back. Nope, I lost Really, you see her disappear. Yeah, I'm like, oh, come on. I, I, oh, we're already on a detour to our detour. And I mean, I love a good tangent, but we're like four deep right now. Like, I, I mean, I got, I'm looking forward to running into an angry god that I robbed. <laughs> and at that moment, Will disappears again. <laughs> Will, you find yourself in another wrecked spell jammer, but there are tiny little squidlings all around you. Little gnome squidlings. Far too small to be a regular mind flare, and then you wink back. Right oh, before so they get your attention. Wait, I just saw some gnome, gnome squidlings. They were cute and terrifying. Wait, all right. Go back. You guys finish repairing the mind flare ship. Yay. At this moment, what do you say, Arakira, as you approach Foss? Hi, do you remember me? Hi! No, I don't remember you. I think I'd remember Dragonborn. How you doing? Uh, very confused. Um, we're, we're from not here, and... Uh, I, I saw the, 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 the spell jammer, Naloid thingy. Yeah. Yeah, it's not I, a spell I, I got the impression not... you got here by other means. Yeah, it's not a spell jammer. That's not confirmed. Um, are you... You look like someone I used to know. Can you let us know what, what's going on in this town? What's with all the undead? Oh, okay. Well, my name's Voss. I'm really excited to meet you. Uh, always good to have more people. You know, most of the world is dead. So, you know, living people are really, I feel like a big plus. I'm, I, I try to be kind of a, you know, glasses half full kind of guy. Uh, so, you know, more, more living people, the, you know, the better. So, uh, this is I am Rube Steel Marrow, and I am alive. I, I'm very, very happy to meet you, Rube Steel Marrow. You seem like a very uh, nice person. Uh, so he is. Uh, cool. Uh, but yeah, so this is Waterdeep, and it's been mostly destroyed. Uh, but you know, I think it's a fixer upper. You know, it could be an, it could be a town again. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know is the are the walking statues being controlled by, I think it's the Black Staff? Do you remember? We're trying to oh. find who's... Oh, yeah. they're all dead. That happened a long time ago. So who's in control of the walking statues? I really don't think anyone is. I think they're just kind of doing their own thing, finding their own truth. That's creepy. Okay. Um, what's what art on? thou doing here? Oh, I well, I heard a big kerfuffle, and there's a big little... Well, I guess Harold's dead, but, um, you know. Oh, actually, has anyone seen Harold's head? <sighs> what is a Harold? This uh, was well, right over there. What? Uh, yeah, no, uh, there, yep, that's his head. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, we might be able to do something with that later, I don't know. Um, so yeah. I hate to break this news to the Voss. Yes. But thine friend is dead. Well, you know, I'm sure he would have liked to have died that way. It seems valiant, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty rough. Yeah, I'm yeah. super bummed about it now, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry, so am I. You know what? There's no time to brood or crying over spilled milk. You know, I'm, I'm not one for brooding hates. or darkness. Yeah, it's not <laughs> worth it. You got. You just gotta live your life and uh, you know move forward. See, I hate know, everything about this plane of existence. There is, you know, at the end of all, any dark tunnel is a ray of light, and uh, I, I, I feel like and Harold's death. probably heading into that light right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy for him. Perhaps See? Harold ended up at the World Tree. W what? <laughs> there were norms. There was a tree. It was more like a courtroom or something, actually, but. It was kind of a horrible place, and it depends on how Harold lived, probably, whether he deserved to go there or not. Okay, uh, well, anyways, um, so what, what what can I do you for? 
Well, we're trying to figure out what we need to do. Do you know... Do you know where the, all the undead came from? Like, do you remember ever a time without all the undead all over the place? Oh, yeah. Years ago, there weren't any undead here. I mean, there were undead, you know. But, you know, within reason. Um, you know, I say, let die, let die. I, well, I'm not really quite sure how that phrase goes. But uh, anyways, yeah. But then uh, I think a portal opened up. And then they just started flooding out. And they just kept on flooding across the entire globe. And then the, the little buggers learned to swim, which I think is very, mm. very uh, impressive for a zombie. Um, and then they spread across the world. And this is like, this is the last city. You're in the, you're in the last city. What are the chances you landed in the last city? You could have landed in none of the cities. <laughs> so, and that would have been unfortunate. So Yeah, we're super lucky. Hey, um, do you know the dragon that was flying overhead? Oh, that's Orkira, yes. Uh, oh. Protector. Yeah, she's been protecting uh, uh, Faerun for, for a very, very, very but long time. But this is Orkira. Hey, we just happen to have similar names, that's all. Okay, what have you ever... No, it's the same person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the... Sure, yes, Briv, that's me too. Right. Okay. Well, it's odd that your parents named you after Orkira, the great and powerful golden dragon, who is slightly terrifying. Uh, Whittle and Whittle and Freely, you have finished repairing the ship. You can do whatever you want now. I will say, like, I go and I, I pull Whittle aside, and I'm like, uh, okay. So I realize, um, you know, you you kind of don't really know this this group, and even you and I have only worked together like a, like a couple of times. Maybe we kind of made Avery a god. I don't know. Like, yeah, that one time. Like, that one time. Uh, yeah. uh, that's kind of why he bites off more than he can chew. Yeah, she's right. she's actually um, jump roping with uh, a tendril. Uh, uh, yeah, no, they they don't uh -huh. feel a thing anymore. It's fine. Um, so <laughs> here here's um, I, I might I might need your help with something though. Um, so my friends and I. When we go to places, we tend to make a ah, significant impact on those places. Uh, this, whatever they did here, is before my time. Mm -hmm. But if we got a chance to, to fix this, they're not going to save this city. They're not going to save this world. But if we got a way that maybe this never happens, we got to do it. Well, what, what are you trying to say? Uh, do you not like this technology? I'm saying we gotta get that dragon back to the Norns. Well, I mean, sure, but I don't—I don't know if it could be anybody else that can that can do that on behalf of the. Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to call him a clone. Um, just, I mean, I'm willing to try. Just, I, I, I think I, I, I see I see the mistakes now. I understand now. It's 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 easy to set the fire. It's hard to come back and see all the the burned down ruins. You know, and if this is if this is a place where things split, like I said, I wasn't here for this one, but I'm sure we're gonna see plenty of things I was there for. And if we can make this right, we've got to try. And freely leans over and does whatever the equivalent of gunning the engines on a nautiloid is, because I'm sure they make a really gross. Like, <laughs> oh, no, no, you gun it and like. Flam just shoots out the center, <laughs> kind of orifice of the small turn. Well, just slapping around, slapping around. Penelope, I need a dexterity audio, saving throw. For our audio <laughs> listeners at home, you're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Alithid ASMR with Beat Aven Todd. Mm -hmm. The word squelch. <laughs> you're welcome. Penelope, unfortunately, you are in front of the, 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 the uh, Nautiloid at this moment. I need a dexterity saving throw. Penelope was just reaching down to grab all of the bracelets. Of this <laughs> all the bracelets. Uh, oh, it's a 22. Oh, okay. Hey, dip right underneath it. <laughs> What'd you roll? A 19. Oh, a 19. Okay. Uh, wow, we're not getting like the, the, the plethora of 20s we got last time. Uh, yeah, you pick him up and yeah, you you the duck. The twenties have been scared away by the chaos. Yeah, that yeah. is still young. They just ran. The nineteens came back and were like, "It's our day!" <laughs> right when you duck to pick up uh, all of all of the, the the bracelets, uh, a tentacle flies right past your hair, <laughs> and you feel your hair kind of go whoosh as it slams into a building near you, and just kind of the building 
looks like it's okay. It's a three-story inn. And then it just crumbles to dust. Like, it just falls and this fills the entire area with smoke and dust. Well, there goes Troll Skull Manor. Again, apologies to our audio listeners, but Lauren and, and Jen, could you hold up your, your mugs, please? I'd just like the record to show this is all the same cup. See how different <laughs> this is? Wait, wait, Hope. Hold up your your mug because I think you still win. Yeah, there we go. But I don't. But I got no. I got to our faces for scale. I was about to say I got no sense of scale for Penelope's. I don't know how big that cup that is. It is. It looks like I'm holding a normal cup, and this is gargantuan. Like yeah, again, as Megan huge mug. As Megan realized, you can fit a pint of ice cream in this, and it's all right. Who's being paid? Pen for scale. You're welcome. There it is. Exactly. Uh, well, exactly. now it's my mission to get everyone a mug to scale so everything looks normal. There it is. There next, it is. Week, next week, we'll but, all have but, bananas. But It'll be great. You, mm-hmm. you send everyone a differently scaled mug? <laughs> yeah. So then it exactly. just really perpetuates the chaos. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, as, as soon as I like sort of like turn this thing over, I'm like, boom, 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 boom. I'm sure it's airtight so they can't hear me. I'm like, come on, come on. <laughs> Hey, listen, Voss, thank you for all the information, but I better go before they go rushing off to somewhere. Thank you. Flower, okay, flower okay, container. I, well, well, Does thou want to go with us? Uh, well, I don't know. I was going to go uh, to the Yawning Portal, to be honest, and take shelter like we always do, because the undead are still around and they cast darkness and stuff like that, so I was going to head down yeah, down so into the Undermountain. I would rather die in the hole than come with us on the spaceship. No, Briv. that's where everyone lives in the hole. Briv, we're also complete strangers to him. I help complete strangers all the time. I know, but inviting them onto our creepy tentacle ship? Probably not the best look. Very well, go die in thine dark little hole. Oh, okay. Well, uh, if, if, if you are looking for shelter when the night falls, I highly recommend you head to... Uh, it's, a, it's an inn called the Yawning Portal. Um, and uh, it's, it's a place it, of legend. Yeah, it, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's considered safe, isn't that linked to the, the to Undermountain? Under Underbounds, where all everyone's living now. Oh, that is rather safe. And that's safer than. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, the Orkara went into Undermountain at one point and basically destroyed and killed everything in there. So. How did she fit? Yeah, uh, we think she has a she has an entrance there somehow somewhere. Perhaps we should go to Undermountain and sneak up on the dragon from the entrance, and then wrap her. Oh wait, I have decided I am not wrapping Orkira in a bracelet because Orkira is the only thing standing between this city and Oblivion. Okay, well, you all seem like really lovely people. Uh, I'm gonna go. You know, I'm just gonna go. Uh, I, I, I got like a. Who's I got... there? Is there anyone of note who's living there besides you? Uh, be, bes- uh, well, I, I don't know that. I'm of note. Uh, I have there? never heard are of there, the... Are there people of note? Just a mayor, uh, 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 Hallister. That's about it. <laughs> Hallister? We, 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 we met Hallister. Riv. Really? Everyone knows Alistair Blackcloak was slain in rich in honorable combat by Baylot the Entertainer. That's I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. That's what I you all told me. That. I'm pretty sure our mayor is alive. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I think he's okay. Uh, this is Alistair. not our world. Yeah. All right, listen. Be, be safe. That seems like an unstable uh, person to have in charge. No? He's really level headed, I thought. Yeah. Fascinating. Time okay. nope. realities. <laughs> well, have, have have a good day. Uh, in, enjoy your tentacle thingy, Shippy. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, uh, offer is always open. Anytime you want to drop by, you know, a, you. A, a, any friend of. <laughs> we are not thine friends. I'm your friend. I'll see you later. Okay, boss. Right, well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pull that back, but I'm gonna save it for you. So future friendship is impending i think so. that's that's very fair all right yes. go be safe well, all right i'm gonna take this herald head if you don't mind me i'm just gonna pick that up <laughs> all right well have a good day bye <laughs> and Whittle, just... Whittle turns to freely and asks uh, hey whose head was that 
Uh, you know, as a friend of mine, uh, he, he was another one of Avrin's warlocks, Harold. Uh, last time I saw him, he just oh. had like a like a like a baby giant arm for a leg. Apparently, things just really got out of hand yep, for him. That's that's right. I I think I actually know Harold, uh, part of Harold. Uh, Sophia's told me about this dumpster behind where they live. They they keep a bunch of Harold parts in there. <laughs> You know, that's just, that guy should not be a patron. That's all I have to say. It's no, him. no, he should not. <laughs> now, the next time I see Averin. For Averin, I can speak from personal experience. It's not, a, it's a, it's a no, challenging I, way to, uh, to. I promised Harold the next time I saw Averin, I was going to yell at him for him, but that's a later problem. Uh, we should go because I, I thought the me as a dragon was creepy, but boss being friendly is actually the creepiest thing i've ever seen so we yeah, should go that guy seemed pretty mellow for like considering yeah yeah the one that calm yeah the one that i know is one of the scariest people i know so we should just go well maybe we're in where? yeah no after the dragon and then i do punch it <laughs> <laughs> Pi will Wait, the headquarters of the watchful order that would be warded and protected if not nah, i mean Vasa... Castle Water Deep is the best yeah, Most Ma said the that the, the people who are in charge of the walking statues are dead, which makes the walking statues their own special brand of interesting. Uh, so yeah, we should probably just go talk to the dragon. Just to clarify, did Penelope, did you get the bracelets? or I, I picked them up. To... Okay. Yeah, you've got them. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure because Briv does not have them anymore. <laughs> Even if they're dead, are there ways to control the statues perhaps? I, th I, th I thought they didn't actually walk. I thought that was just like a legend. Like everybody's like, oh, the statues walk. No, but I mean, I just, they just like stand around. The legend around. was that they had walked in the past and had then been, been steady until... Uh, a point in time at which the city was so threatened that they needed to be brought back to to protect. Oh, I think this counts. Again. Definitely counts. <laughs> and did did we see Orkira fly towards um, Dragon Mountain? Yes, you did. Yeah, I mean, Dragon. rightly so. Yeah, you know that's you know that's what it's called. That's what it's called now. You know, I mean, the Under Mountain is the Under Mountain, but the Over Mountain is Dragon Mountain. I thought I love that, that ride. That, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Uh, fly that direction and just see what we see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're, you're starting up <laughs> this nice cave anywhere? Yeah. Widow's going to look at Freely and say, uh, you think of what I'm thinking? Almost certainly not. <laughs> I think we should go hide in that dragon hole. Oh. Then, yeah. Yeah. I actually, I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One does not just simply fly into a dragon hole. <laughs> One um, can try, I, though. I will say, is, is, is we're, because I don't, Presumably, this isn't that far of a uh, far of a trip. I just, without taking my eyes off the windshield, I just say, you know, you guys, if this is all our fault, even indirectly, we've got to fix it. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I am not convinced true. it is our fault, but I will still help. Freely did say if. If. I wasn't here for this, but I mean, not gonna lie, this looks like the kind of thing that would happen if we weren't around, so... I don't know. What what even happened? Did you do some witchcraftery? Was that you mentioned? Uh, uh, yes. Quite a bit. And I then made a wish when my... With more yeah. wishes. I, I made a wish when my god died. Uh, you know, murdered. This, this world is a pretty good candidate for the phoenix to stop by. Not gonna lie. Maybe like not while we're here, but afterwards? The thought has crossed my mind. Hmm. Perhaps this is how. But you the Phoenix him. only listens to thee like ten percent of the time. So, <laughs> well, we're going to talk to a dragon. Dragons have hordes. I can increase that to a hundred percent. Also, through money, thou canst buy thine god. I mean, that's what churches are. You know what? <laughs> you know what, Briv? To make life easy, I'm just going to say yes to that. Very well. This is why I have completely cast aside organized religion. <laughs> if it helps, I'm also not very organized. I appreciate the two paladins are like, yeah, what's that about? <laughs> 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 right. I prefer to follow a spiritual path and not institutionalized religion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're getting the deep, deep concept. This is, getting, this is a deep, this is a deep, deep. Deep episode. Uh, but we're getting ready to go deep into Underman. Um, uh, I guess, uh, well, upon approach, is it obvious that there is a dragon-sized hole in the side of it? 
Uh, you are approaching what some of you would know as the Castle Ward, which surrounds the mountain area, well, which the mountain is part of, but you see lined in skeletons and skulls oh, a sentence or just a w two words right outside the walls. It says Death Ward. Aww. <laughs> oh, that's like she's inviting us in. Well, if this seems like... pretty safe, it's Death Ward, right? It's Spelled out in bone. May I use um, uh, uh, illusory um, script and add the halflings right underneath it? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I was trying to figure out how to I... do I couldn't do it with Eldritch Blast through the window, so thank you. I did that this morning, Alundra. They're okay. <laughs> There's like an old man sweeping and like next to it and making sure all the the skeletal bodies are in the right shape of the letters and then the illusory script appears. <laughs> He's just like, oh, oh my god, that's so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> this job sucks. <laughs> and he walks off. No. Who are the halflings? <gasps> Hawk, like all halflings? Hawk, whatever. But the I mean, hawk yeah. is bad. And why is he still doing his job in these circumstances? <laughs> no, Someone has to speak to the choices. choices. The people who work hard in <laughs> times of struggle. You are right, Alindra. We are what we repeatedly do. <laughs> 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 all right. I need perception checks from everybody looking out a porthole on the Mind Flare ship as you're flying rather quickly around the mountain. Uh, 26. May I use my passive? My 21? Uh, I, I, wouldn't mind. I wouldn't say no to a roll. 17. Hmm. Okay. That's a big old 10. Freely's busy. You're piloting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to claim the same because I got a 12. <laughs> Penelope, are you joining me in passiving? Or in perceptioning? No. Penelope's on the floor counting bracelets. <laughs> Would you like me to put those into my into my fanny pack of holding? I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. I just tried to count about how many how many people we have to go and give bracelets to. How many are she there? Said fanny. Every time you attempt to count them, uh, first there's three, huh? and, and then you count again, and there's twelve. Oh, yeah. And then happens. you count again, and now there's six. Ah, it's the way that two plus two is four, except the very high values of two. Oh, I thought I was just bad at counting. Okay. <laughs> Multiple you realities, just... they're, they're fading into an out of existence. Ah, oh, okay. Dimensions. Well, okay, yeah, we'll put wobbly, them in wobbly, your bag. Timey, wimey. We'll just stuff. keep them safe so I don't oh, lose boy. one or gain one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Penelope for the win. Um... <laughs> All right, you do see high at the very top of the mountain, there is a hole that has been dug. Almost like a perch, more than anything else. It is not a naturally occurring cave. And it's blasted with fire. Oh. I imagine that is the front door. What do you think, Freely? You still feeling pretty good about this? Uh, nope, and I punch it to fly into the cave. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> you fly into the cave, and you do see, and it's not a huge cave, because you might have been under the impression this is going a bit deeper than you thought, but you're like, oh, you need to hit the brakes. I need a, I need a vehicle uh, check right my, now. My logic was, if she opens up with the flame breath, the ship will survive it, and we wouldn't. That's why I was like, coming in the ship, not coming on foot. Okay. Um, what, what, what are what are we? I don't know. Just decks, I guess. Uh, for vehicles, I think it's actually intelligence plus. Just do something with. I was the about to say, oh, it's the yeah. wrong person flying. If this is in based. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm flying. I'm pretty by sure feel. vehicles are. I'm flying by feel. Okay. Um. Well, vastly different results. It's a 15 on the die. If it's an int thing, that's a 14. If it's a dex <laughs> thing, it's an 18. <laughs> Oh boy! You react uh, fast enough, you just hit the just wrong button doing it. <laughs> you can't think your way through flying a ship. Who wrote these? Uh, so when I drove a car through a mess, one day. <laughs> I like the way you don't think. 
Riddle, what's your strength? Just roll me roll me a 1d20. For the ship. Four. Five. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the ship comes in pretty hot. And at that moment, this just <laughs> explosion of gas just erupts from the cave and envelops the tentacles and the entire ship all around the portholes and everything else. Luckily, I assume that you've sealed everything off. I mean, hopefully. But all the tentacles <laughs> go limp, like straight down, like like spaghetti. And the ship crashes to the ground. Again? The ground ground? Or the Thou bottom of... need another hour, I assume? The ground I in the guess. cave. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> we made it into the cave. We didn't quite, yeah. I don't like... Unint- uh, I unintended guests, uninvited. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Hail or Kira. I said one problem at a time. This uh, is yeah, not your we, time to be a problem. We, we waited until that problem. problem was solved. Yeah. Uh-huh. My friends like being problems at any time. This is the right here. And I'm Do pointing at her? other or Kira. <laughs> Do you guys open the portholes and start having this conversation? Or are you uh, like... <laughs> However I get out of the ship. Is yeah, yeah. Okay. Bef- before I leave, I'm going to... D- hey, Penelope. Yeah. I'm going to have to say some really bad things, aren't I? You don't have to. Yeah, but I think I know exactly what to say to get this me to listen. Oh. Okay, well, just because you're saying bad things doesn't make them bad. Okay. You want to stay close? I'm, this the whole thing is going to suck, right? It's yeah. all going to suck. Okay. I can help. I can I help. I put my Let's hand on Akira's shoulder. Just okay. for comfort. Just right before you guys go, I'm like, well, apparently I got to fix the ship again, but I believe in you, so I'm going to give you inspiration. <laughs> yeah. There's just like steam and smoke mm. and more tentacles are like wiggling around that shouldn't <sighs> be where they are. That's, that's, that's uh, man, just, uh, I understand normally there's 10 of those things in here flying this. It's just me and Whittle. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you inspiration as a D8. <laughs> okay. No, me? Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow Briv out the door and go talk to the dragon you see this very large lair but with almost zero there's no gold whatsoever in this entire cave there are however a virtual hill of diamonds and diamond dust everywhere you go the ground is sand made from diamonds this is Perhaps the biggest collection of diamonds you've ever seen in your entire lives. Perhaps obsessive. Uh, like these so must have been taken from all we, across the world. The ship wrecked right in front of Orkira, Orkira, right? But we see this horde of diamond and diamond dust kind of behind her in her lair. Yeah. Oh, it's no, it's all around you. Oh, okay. Just thinking to myself, do I steal it or do I not steal it? She's probably going to know if I steal it. But I really want to steal it. It's really shiny. We're still and I on think, the ship, though, right? I think Orkira would want these, but the Orkira, I think, is real is here. <laughs> but the one that's scary is out there. Br- Briv got off the ship. Like, I got yeah, off the I, ship I too. Through a okay. crash hole. So we are getting off the ship. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, you do see this giant ancient gold dragon, whose face looks very similar to Orkira, behind Orkira. Very, tucked away in a corner, you hear a growling, vicious, monstrous noise. It's this. <laughs> ah, kill it with fire! Do I recognize the language? No, but this weird ball starts to shift and warp and twist behind our character, and you hear this this horrible terrifying monstrous sound as it unfurls and you see what appears to be a dire hedgehog ah. oh for a second i thought that was the xanathar <laughs> he was <laughs> mad at us <laughs> calm down calm down i'll just i'll just burn them to ash if they cause any problems okay no buddy? no burning we are not here to cause problems well, what do you want why are you in my lair So the Cyberx did this to you, right? 
Yeah. Why do you know that? <sighs> because I had a similar experience. Um. Is this what is going to happen to the Orkira? Not anymore. I fixed it. Um. What happened to your friends? How come you didn't stop Saranthus? What friends? Well, me for one, Briv for another. I don't, I don't know who any of you well, are. Penelope was possessed at the time. Mm. Okay. I don't have any friends. I don't have time for friends. What were you doing when you got poked by the Cybriacs that caused this? I, I, I was asked by Paylor to assist with the situation in Avernus, and I, I, I went. That's not what happened. Was murdered oh. by Saranthus. And it's a little bit fuzzy wish is what to me. sent things into motion. Point of order, Penelope half Pint, you do have this dire hedgehog, uh, which is a beast, is now under your other section. Uh, and you have the ability to wild shape now into a dire hedgehog. Yes! <laughs> oh, you you so will find good. the stat block in your uh, uh, character sheet. It's been there a while, actually. I'm glad so. I didn't kill it. <laughs> this almost makes coming here worth it. <laughs> Lauren is super happy we came here now. Um... Is, is Paylor okay? We don't talk anymore. This is my world. Okay, but is he okay? I assume so, yes. Okay. Do you, so you don't pray to him anymore? No. You don't pray to anybody? No. Oh. Everyone let this place die, but me. And I failed, so I keep it safe now. So, the reason I know all of this is because I'm a version of you that different things happened. And uh, we were sent here because we were told to collect you to fix this. To be precise, we were told to bonk thee on the head and wrap thee in these bracelets. I'd like to see you try. Okay. I mean, I can bonk thee on the head. Now, what happens after that? I, I know that I can accomplish that task. But I don't have time for this. I need, I need a rest up before the sun sets again. So, would you be willing to come with us if I could make sure that the rest of the undead were destroyed? No, this is my world. These are my people. I keep them safe. Well, if you want to keep them safe, then the rest of the undead need to be destroyed, right? If you're lying, you're lying. You can't kill them all. That's too easy. This is I some kind of trickery. Or Kira, you can cast a zone of truth, yes? And you, or Kira, you would be able to recognize a zone of truth? The other or Kira gave up organized religion too. She might not know any longer. <laughs> Fine, you can cast a zone of truth. I don't care. It's not going to change anything. It's not real. You can't just magic away. Uh, when you, when you left home, you were looking for a phoenix, right? Yeah. I'm going to pull out my book and show it to her. No. No. I'm going to walk forward and hold open the book so that she can read it. This is the difference. And so I can't fix this, but my God can. No. Okira, thou art being obstinate now. Why no? Because mm, if that means you can just come here in one day and save the world, and I lost all these people, then that means that this was my fault. So no, I don't believe you. 
That's it too very easy. well could have been thine fault, but this is thine chance to make I up for it. I have been here for years. It's not your fault. It's mine. And that's why I'm going to fix it. I'm the one who made the wish that caused this to happen. I'm not letting anyone leave the mountain. They are not going to be safe. Even if you kill all the undead, none of these people are going to be safe. I take Griff and I reach up and I cast Greater Invisibility on Griff and reach into the, the bag and pull up one of the bracelets and hand it. Or I, I guess I hand it to Griff before I cast Greater Invisibility. I do need a slight of hand check. Uh, you didn't mention bracelet. You just mentioned bonking on the head, correct, Briv? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, to be truthful, I did say wrap you in a bracelet. Ah. <laughs> I, I, I did say the word bracelet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if that's very sensible. I think but it's I'll what I use... <laughs> I'm not very good at sleight of hand, but uh, I... I'm a little will... shocked. Huh? Uh, no, no, I'm little... shocked by something else. I'm looking at this sheet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I will use my... I have foreseen this moment. I'll use my 14 plus 2 as a 16 on that check. Okay. That's all I got. Yeah, sorry. We got a 21. What? Uh, I mean, do we have but any she is idea how the bracelet? Is... Conversation with them. It is an ancient gold dragon with a exceptionally Fair. huge bonus to perception, though. Fair. She doesn't yeah. know why I'm giving it to him, though. Necessarily. No, but uh, it seems like you got a bracelet there. <laughs> As <laughs> I said, for Griff? we need thee to come with us okay. just temporarily. This world shall be fine. Everyone is holed up in the yawning portal. But these people won't be safe without me. I failed so many people. I'm not failing these people. If they leave, they won't be safe. I've seen so many people die. I'm not letting them go. I will keep them safe. That's my job. That's what I, I do. I think that thou dost have a savior and possibly a martyr complex. And thou canst just let that go and help us save the multiverse, including this place. I'm not you are a martyr. About I watched the, the whole world die. You're concerned about the people of this world. If you don't, if, if we don't fix this and we can't get your help, the people of every world, of every reality will die. You have the chance to make things right. You have the chance to help friends. And it seems that the problem here is you never met your friends. Alright, what? Why don't you go save the world? Go go speak some words and, and do everything I couldn't do. First, we gotta get you and whoever's left in the city out of here. Or to safety. And, and I look around. Is it only diamonds? Do you happen to pick up a couple of rubies along the way? Uh... I think I, where I, I think there's one in Undermountain somewhere. Could you be a bit more specific? <laughs> the werebats love them. They love the shiny, the shiny, the shiny things, so they collect them. Okay. What do we need a ruby for? I need it in order to summon the phoenix. And in order to prove my point to the dragon, I will, I'm still holding open the book. I'll flip to the page that has the, the summoning ritual on it so that they can see it. So if you want to help, we got a ship and I can't imagine there's a lot of people who are left in town uh, who are not undead. So let's get them on the ship let's, or get everybody deep, deep underground. And... Then I'll go make sure all the undead are gone. And you go with everybody else. 
I really do hope that the Phoenix is listening this 10% of the time. Okay, fine. There's uh, a corridor to Under Mountain behind me. Oh, you can... That's the long way, though. What's the short way? We've gotten until the, the sun goes down, right? Yeah, there's an elevator. Yeah, the awning portal. Okay. Can you give us directions to where the whereabouts are so I can find the the ruby I need? Uh, I don't even remember what you follow the guano. They 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 they, 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 they the people there know. It's that they they infest the place. They got like a big lair. There's a subterranean lair. It's gross. Okay. Yeah, they're but still, if it's... they're still people. They just decide to poop upside down. It's disgusting. I poop upside down sometimes. <laughs> How you know, did I get I'm... on you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know I what you're doing in that. I'm trying to imagine you pooping upside down right I now. I have metal not... that can come out, and I demonstrate metal coming out of my body. And one of the things that comes out nope. is uh, is kind of like a little like nope. ramp from nope. my hindquarters. <laughs> That's uh, it's very cool, industrious. But, uh, it, Cool, but it's disgusting. Yes. Penelope, I thought I was the one who was going to have to say some horrible things, and I was wrong. As normal, we should go. All right, I'll be back. Are you saying uh, that we're, we're friends? <laughs> With the upside down pooper? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I, don't know. I, I, have, I, have, I have deep reservations about your reality. <laughs> I do every day. Honestly, I wouldn't blame you. It's right. been a weird one, okay? Do you need me f to fly you, or is this, how's your ship? How is really? Whittle, how's the ship? How is the ship? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you're covered um... in about 20 tentacles, all slowly choking the life out of you. Whittle, you're underneath some panel, and you're being partially elect like electrocuted. Uh, <laughs> just give me a 1d20 roll for both of you for Ar Ar Arcana at this moment. Wait, is it an Arcana roll or a D20 roll? Arcana, sorry. Okay. Bold of you to assume there's a difference. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, four, 14. 25. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the electricity like shocks through you, and for a moment you see Whittle's dampier-like form and <laughs> pointy teeth at the, this exact moment, but the electricity kind of arcs from Whittle, hits freely, and all the tentacles fly off him freely. Uh, as a spasm reaction, and the ship kind of powers up and starts levitating again. Oh, that was that was pretty cool. I gotta learn how to do that. These things are kind of finicky, but uh, yeah, all right. Uh, I was afraid we were gonna miss out on Undermountain. <laughs> all right, and like very much start like rotating, rotating it around, and um, I want to hit Dragon or Kira with a message. Before so, I like rotate the ship. So, so I before can't see before we leave, though, can we have like a few of these diamonds because I can cast magical energy through them to bring people back to life? I mean, it's for a good cause. It's not like I'm going to buy Penelope a new flower dress. <laughs> that would be you, 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 calls. I might do that too, but it wouldn't be with a diamond. <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Man, I've been sewing one like a sucker. Uh, may I give guidance on this? You may. It doesn't matter because I got 20 on the die. Hey! 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 That's in a very aggressive die. way. Oh. Yeah, I was very persuasive. It's like oh. break into a Slim Jim. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, he, oh, said, yeah. he said the exact right thing, which is use them to bring people back to life. So. Mm -hmm. All right. That's well, a, that, what does that mean again, Adam? That's a 28. Uh, oh, uh, but and, for and people also, at home. Yes, for people at home, we are going to roll on the multiversal magic table. And Megan and chat is going to guide you through that process. And here in a little while, something is going to happen after you go to Demiplane and roll a percentage die. We find out what happens with Briv. Um, I really hope it's a good one. Good luck to everyone. All right, you can take as many diamonds as you want. Oh. May I and now, as well? um, I, if you fail, I need to bring everyone back that I can bring back that's still alive in case they sure. die. If I fail, it means I have died because I shall not stop 
until life leaves mine heart and blood leaves mine veins. And so therefore, if I am dead, that's literally the definition of death. That's when you stop. It was a far more dramatic way to say it. And and so thou canst take the diamonds that I am taking from thee now off my cold, dead, steel-boned body. And thou canst bring everyone back to life. Possibly including me. It would be a kind gesture. I don't know. You, you poop upside down. But okay. I mean, just occasionally when the situation warrants it. I've lived in trees. When does it warrant it? I'm a dragon. I've never needed to poop upside down. Thou hast not lived in trees. I've been in an elvish settlement for many, many weeks at once. And <sighs> real, real quick, as we gotta go. How long have you been friends with them? <laughs> Eons. Real quick, before we go. Um... I seem to remember that when you get this powerful, you can transform yourself into something slightly smaller. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't get, uh, this is embarrassing. I never got quite used to being, a, 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 I can make myself smaller. I just can't make myself other shapes because things go, it gets weird. It gets really weird. I, I can make myself kind of smaller. Yeah, why? Well, I mean, well, I mean be- because eventually we're gonna, I think we get everybody underground and then you're gonna need to go on that ship and I don't think you're gonna fit on that ship in this size. Oh, I, I never get the fit pieces right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make myself small, but you have to take, you have to take Jibbers, my, my dire, my dire hedgehog. No, absolutely. We're gonna save everyone we can. Yeah. Can one of you shrink? I don't know how big your ship is, but he, he also needs a lot of room. How, how big is this dire hedgehog? Dire hedgehog is the size of a very large, like almost like a, like like a very robust horse. <laughs> it's big. Okay, but that that will fit on the ship. I'm assuming because this is a mind flare ship. They're the big. Ship's, that... The ship's got a crew complement of 35, so uh, that many figuring... people can be on board at, at a minimum comfortably. So, can this figuring... creature be ridden? It's a hedgehog. I would advise against it, even for somebody with a, with a steel bottom. Can it be can ridden? It be, yes. Should it, it be, be ridden? saddled? It really depends on, you know, how you like to go. I mean, considering what you just told uh, Dragon Arcara, she's not going to let you ride this hedgehog. I, I, I typically like to have any kind of creature of this majesty betwixt my thighs. And so, therefore, I would like to give it a try. It's a little uh, prickly. I, I, I have been called prickly as well. Jibbers, do you want this very this upside down pooper to ride on top of you? <laughs> I would ask it politely. I think that was a yes. <laughs> do you attempt to mount? Not yet. The it's dire not, hedgehog. <laughs> it's it's not time for mounting. Okay. But in the tunnel, it could be very beneficial. And prickly. All right, so we're leaving them here. We're going to go get the ruby and then come back. Is that kind of the plan? Lauren is asking. (laughs) (laughs) Talk amongst yourselves real quick. I've had a lot of energy drink. Okay. (laughs) I mean, it seems like the people should be evacuating while we're getting the ruby so that the moment you can do it, you do do it. So before something else terrible happens and we can get out of here. Yeah, how long does this ritual process last? It's 10 minutes. Uh, Where can they go that's safe? Underground. Underground. If everybody goes underground, I'm figuring if I do this just before sunset when everybody is, because that's what Voss said, remember, is that they all know to go to the awning portal and they all live underground the phoenix is scorched earth policy but it doesn't she's called the you know she destroyers of worlds but it's not like the world goes it's the destroyer of the surface of the world exactly exactly if they're all yeah go down the yawning portal basically and ride it out aren't they already there at this point but what if people are outside maybe like in the houses yeah "Eh, well and that's out in camp tonight so that's why I'm saying we that she'll do the ritual just before the sun is going down because that's usually when people would be going into the awning portal to to go and then maybe on the way down we tell people there to spread the word to that nobody gets left on the surface. Fair. Um and, and then we go from there. I can get behind this plan. Yeah, okay. the, the dragon probably needs to rally the people to go into hiding. They'll listen to her. Right, the dragon is loud. Can mm-hmm. fly large distances. 
and they seem to trust her. So if if she's if we've gotten her on board with this plan, then that's that's what we do. And then we go find a ruby, and then you know hopefully at that point once Todd puts his yeah, then at that point we all go get ice cream and milkshakes. Yeah. I don't know if and I'm a little, little DM can or also a good mislead <laughs> <laughs> and uh, double her running speed, so she'd be running at a hundred. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody would trust Little, um, but she can certainly help rally everybody. So while we we're gone, while you were gone, we're gonna ask the uh, dragon to help rally the people to go down. To, 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 nobody's left on the surface. Everybody goes underground before night falls and um i forgot what the other thing is we were gonna do and then we're gonna go get the ruby in the meanwhile so that we yeah, can hit you can hit the ritual tell them all to to, to go hot dragon or kira dragon yeah oh, boy. and then the only other and then the dire uh hedgehog is coming on the ship and then uh dragon or kira will shrink down to fit on the ship that's kind of the plan okay so where are you right now? Uh, I think we're convincing Dragon or Kira to go tell everybody to go underground. Don't nobody get left, you know, hiding in their own houses or anything. Everybody under underground. And then uh, the last thing, if she's okay with that, the last thing I'll say is, you know, that we'll meet back where the ship is. Um, and I will ask Penelope as we're about to leave. I'll say, so Dragon Me is going to be on the ship. Would you do me a favor? And not try to put a bracelet on her. If she's going to come with you willingly. Okay. For how uh, long? I have the bracelets now, don't I? Yes. I don't think Okira knows that. And okay. she'll keep talking to Penelope. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I, I trust you if you're... Do you think that she's trustworthy and hanging out with you? Okay. Okay. All right, let's go get ourselves a uh, ruby, okay? Br Briv, if he hears any of that, he's thinking to himself, wait, do they have to wear the bracelet in order to make the trip? Like, and, and, and he honestly does not know because Adam doesn't have a clue either. And so he's like, like the wheels inside his head are just turning, turning, turning. And then he eventually just decides not to say anything. <laughs> or Kara didn't think that far ahead, so nope. Okay, so you are flying, and then something winks into existence. As we had a strange roll from someone in chat, uh, everything that is invisible... Borkware uh, Mark D. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So they rolled a 64 any invisible creatures within 300 feet of you suddenly become visible. Um, well, that Drift plot... Tense. Uh, yeah. So... You see, before your eyes, uh, something deeply shocking. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but we just came up with a plan. Come on. <laughs> Give me a moment, since I wasn't necessarily 100% prepared for, for chaos. <laughs> I got good news for you. I'm aware of the weapons complement of this ship. Something's about to get lit up in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, B. Dave, for looking up spell jammers uh, mm -hmm. while while the rest of us are chatting with a, a weird version of ourselves. Thank you for looking up spell jammers. Mm -hmm. B. Dave says spell jammer confirmed. I mean, apparently, that that's uh, three times it's been said. Spell jammer confirmed. There you off go. of off of Briv, um, a weird yellow electric energy starts to fluctuate and you almost see like three different versions of Briv for a moment and this wild magic spikes off of him and arcs and explodes and kind of will become these weird glowing butterflies that kind of fill the entire the entirety of the, the, the spell jammer and just swoop through it and as they are flying around they leave kind of pixie dust everywhere and then you see behind you, behind the pilot's hallway and everything else. A tall figure. Its knees backwards. Its hooves are cloven. It's holding a large morning star and fire just seems to rim around it. It's got a snaking red tail behind. Its belts 
has three skulls mounted to it. It must be 10, 12 feet tall. It has a long green waving cloak. And this creature looks familiar to you, Penelope Halfpint. Um. It has kind of the face of a, almost like a horse or a goat and large black horns erupting out of its head. Well, this is unexpected. Thou dost not say, who art thou? Hello. I'm the one who killed your friends. Which one of my friends? I have. I am friends. Bale. I'll be seeing you. And just bamfs out of existence, teleports. Ah. What was that? Who that's, was that? Does anyone know who that is? That's a side quest. What? I mean, that's definitely for what? later. It didn't really say we're trying to do one side quest at a time. Come on. It, it, it kind of felt like that person that comes up to the at a party and starts talking to you, and then you just walk <laughs> off, and it's completely inconsequential what they had to say. I mean, yeah, but that was also a really creepy creature. Who, who was he talking to? What friends did he kill? I have seen worse. He's not so bad. I mean, the last thing he said was, friends. I'm the one who killed your friends. That tends to be bad things. Do you uh, know who did, that is? Did, did he say friends or friends, plural? Because I thought I heard friends. Plural. Friends, plural. Penelope, do you know who that was? Um, does Penelope know? You know that that is the fiend that, that you I made, made the a deal, deal with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if anyone wants to make an arcana check, I do may. not. Sure. I'll make an arcana check just, just for fun. Why not? Let's do this. <laughs> nope. No, twelve. Oh! No, fourteen. What'd the, you get? The the D four luck is still with me. I rolled a nineteen, which means I got an eighteen. <laughs> yeah, this is the Archdevil Bale that you just saw, formerly in char charge of the Blood War. Oh yeah, I would. In know. Avernus. I would know about that. Yeah. So does anybody say this out loud? <laughs> Penelope, how do you know the arch devil that's in charge of the blood war? Oh, he was my friend once. I made a deal with him. It was it was to save you guys. Okay. So very helpful. Yeah. Except he just said that he was the one that killed your friends. Is this? A di Don't take this the wrong way. It's okay for you have a lot of friends. Do you have other friends that are dead that we should know about? <laughs> I don't I don't really know what he's talking about for that part. Okay. It must be another universe thing, another another dimension, another plane of existence. Must or be. Or it right? could be the reason that we're not here. <gasps> um... Thou dost kind of make friends with anything that happens to move about and breathe. So... Once once that thing disappears and they start talking, Freely punches it for Undermountain. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, he's, you, he's gone. We're flying and talking. Mm -hmm. We're yeah, circling into the, the Yawning Portal. You you do hover above, and you, there is a hover mode if you wish to uh, uh, start it. Um, you get to right above the Yawning Portal. Briv is uh, going to crash through the ceiling. <laughs> uh, wait, I thought we agreed the one they know was going to... Oh, okay. All right, give me that flex check. I assume you're trying to a superhero landing of some kind. Yes. Oh, that's nice. That's a uh, uh, 27. There's a door! <laughs> you just crash through like a couple layers of the yawning portal and land right next to the elevator that is now uh, above the actual well. And there are a few guards and they're just like, why? Head on down. The water is just fine. I'm going to yell back up. I'll look over at whoever is left and be like, would you like a, a glide down? And I will offer my hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll so. take one if you don't mind. I will start ferrying people down the hovering ship through the hole the Briv has made. <laughs> because why not? Everyone knows that doors are the most dangerous foe that one can face in a dungeon. <laughs> but we are not in a dungeon. 
Not yet. <laughs> the world is a dungeon, Erlindra. <laughs> Uh, do I? Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. Nobody will recognize me. Never mind. I was going to ask if I recognize anybody, but the widow is a vampire. Me. I had to say it. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Why haven't I thought of that yet? <laughs> uh, okay, so you get into the yawning portal. It's not really a tavern anymore. It's yeah. It, there is a makeshift. Uh, Clearly, gnomes over-engineered this elevator. There are more gears than need to be. In fact, most of this room is gears. Some of those gears are not working so, so well now that Briv has smashed his way through it. Uh, but there is an elevator. Right, so... Forgive my ignorance. Who are all of you? Uh, that's less important than the fact that we need everybody to get underground. Oh, well, no, no, no. I, know, I met them earlier. Oh, hi. Do you remember me? My name's Voss. Hi, Voss. It's great to hey. see you again. Thanks for dropping by. No problem. Literally, um, it's we could have used the door, but you know what? I we it's now airy. It's now really airy, and I'm really I'm it's really a, I'm super psyched about what you've done with the place now. So yeah, that's good. Great. You're gonna be really psyched about what happens next. So it's really important that everybody get underground well before uh, nighttime. So can you spread the word? Not let anybody hang out in their homes or hovels or stuff. Tell people everybody's got to go underground. Well, I would normally need an explanation, but I think this that, that sounds great. I mean, we normally stay underground anyways to, you know, to, you, it's just safer. So, you know, it's I, I don't think we're going to get much argument. We from aren't telling anybody. thee what thou dost already want to do, but yeah. we need everyone to know it. And so are there any other souls lost out in this God's forsaken land? No. No, 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 no. It's it's pretty much all dead. Yeah, we we, we tried to, or Kara tried to find living creatures, but uh, uh, she told us she couldn't find any others. I'll take thine word for it. Hey, yeah. uh, we're also we're dipping underground to go find a bat cave filled with guano that might have a bunch of rubies. Do you know where that is? Possibly oh, a giant. Oh yes, penny, yeah, yeah. Tyrannosaur. Shit alley. Yeah, that's that's terrible. I mean, well, guano alley. We sh we should say. Uh, or the, ca the cavern of the Not poop. We have a lot of words for it, but it's disgusting. Crap cavern, yeah. Crap cavern, yeah. Well, that's a, they, yeah, that's what the kids are calling it these days. You know, I mean, it's I not always... that bad. I mean, it smells really bad, but you know, I think if it was cleaned, it could be a lot of things. It could be like a really nice place for people to live or maybe a nursery. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> that could be where thou dost need to grow thine underground gardens, because this entire surface of this planet shall be scorched, and thou will not grow anything there for decades. I think a garden would be fantastic. We just need to get those werebat people to stop pooping upside down on everything. So, uh, all right. So, uh, you need you need a guide. I take it. Uh, do we need a guide, or can you just give us directions? Uh, I, I can give you directions. Just go all the way down. Oof. Whoa, I don't know. Uh, let me think. I think it's like the seventh level. Guide. And there's a large cave. So I just, vote just... guide. Okay, boss, you want to come with? I would love to. That would be fantastic. It's very exciting. I've never been on an adventure before. That's... I'm not going to have to kill anybody, though, right? No. Nope, I've never nope. killed anyone. We shall do all the killing. Well, okay. Because, this... like, the sight of blood kind of freaks me out, but. I'm going to have so many stories after this. All right, let's go. And let's pile everybody in the elevator. And Orkira just looks really freaked out. The happier boss is, the more freaked out she is. Whee! Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to hit the... Okay, the level seven. Uh, you may not know this, but some of this was built with magic. Some of these lairs. And some there are rumors that the Gith Yankee live on some of these floors and some mind flares long time ago before Kara burned them all to dust. Yeah, there were all kinds of things. Uh, well, this lair right here, uh, I think there's even a dimensional portal to an asteroid uh, somewhere in the astral plane. Well, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a rumor. When we said guide, we did not also say tour. Oh, come on, Briv. Don't you want to hear about the bugbears on the moon? I have a question, uh, Voss. Y what do yes? these buttons? What do these buttons do? Oh, this God. lever here. What's this do? Uh, that Did that you... just speeds us up in case of an emergency. Okay. Please don't. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> Everyone I can't make get it to go back up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everyone's also, within ten feet of me. Plus four. 
the uh, slack a just drops Ooh, in the elevator and rockets. Mm -hmm. 20, 22. Wait, what is this? Con save. <laughs> I got a 12. Yeah, you feel your 21. lower bits kind of feel like they go into your upper bits for a bit. It's uncomfortable. Do with what that you may. <laughs> you're just like, ah, oh, I feel flatter. It's not good. And you're dropping very fast. This is like the worst type of ride. In fact, it's falling faster than you would fall. It's being jet propelled down and you get to the seventh floor with a, an alarming break. Yeah. Woo. Never use that button before myself. That's okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm good. I'm it's a, it's a learning opportunity. Sometimes you gotta hit, hit some buttons to figure out what they do. You know what I mean? I, I think I almost. I think I know what it means to poop yourself upside down now. Just from like the, <laughs> I, I was going to say that's a circumstance that we're doing that is very wise. <laughs> well, I think it almost went. It, I think it went out and then went back in again. Uh, well, uh, anyway, so this is layer this seven. This is more information than any of us need. I'm a sharer. <laughs> I'm very well known for sharing. Sometimes I overshare. Mm. I I this is one of those times. I also heard that you really like magic, and uh, you oh, really I love magic. Magic, yeah. magic is the long, best. Walks, I'm use magic to animate Harold's head. When, when he says that, Freely pulls out the sword and activates the green flame blade and clanks it on the shield and is like, you're about to say some magic, buddy, and walks down the hallway. Can you teach me? I want to learn no. magic. No. <laughs> Gotta be born with old. it. Yes, absolutely. Too old for the I training. teaching a cantrip. I'll start teaching, uh... <laughs> teach him green flame I'll, blade. I'll teach him light, because that's, yeah, that's part of... Oh, as, wow. As I don't understand why. Lachma, that's part of my doctrine, is okay, if someone so if asks I, to learn magic, I teach if I can. I, I do this? Yes. And then, yes. And, and then I, 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 I go blue, blue, blue. Why doesn't people do... Why don't people... Why do people do anything without magic? It doesn't make sense. This is amazing. Okay. This is the best adventure. All right, uh, here we are. Uh, there, there's Guano Alley or uh, uh, the, the Cavern of Crap. And you see all the squeak, you hear the squeaking noise and the smell is terrible. It's strong Press ammonia. It pulls out some Press metal. Digits, it clockwork digitation, yep. Yeah, 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 you're just like, oh, snap. Uh, it doesn't bother you so much, Will. <laughs> For whatever reason, being undead, you don't need to breathe, so. You, you can actively make the choice to stop breathing. <laughs> What's everyone's problem? Yeah, Briv's just pinching his nose with a me metal, and he's breathing out of his mouth, which could carry its own kind of... <sighs> oh, okay. All right, nasal filters. Uh, yeah. You do see a very large... There are piles of things. Uh... <laughs> Would you like to elaborate, DM, on what those things are? <laughs> There's bugs feeding off these piles. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen our wonderful planet. Uh, are there any horse flies <laughs> in there? Bung beetle, or yeah, bung beetles. Horse flies beetles? can live down here. It is uh, okay, poisonous. Um, you have, I need a constitution saving throw pretty much every turn. I mean, there's a solution to all of this, and it involves fire. Oh, God. There's another solution, although although I like the fire idea. Uh, do you want a constitution saving throw before I do the solution? Or At after? this moment, you do see Freely's green flame blade slightly ignited, starting to like kind of flicker and get bigger. Oh, all right. Everyone's like just going, poof. I'm like, boom, I'm boom, like boom. Or, or Kira, are you teaching? Are you making me stronger? No, I think I, I, I think there's just a lot of crap. <laughs> Um, before, before we set the world on fire and before we set this cavern on fire, do we see any rubies? Like, without looking around, without going deeper into this place. You, you see one shining that's been embedded, uh, on one of the stalactite stalagmites. I'm never going to get this right. Uh, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. Here's how you can remember Hanging it. This tight. how I remember it. <laughs> might tight. might like crawl tight. along the floor and you cling tight to the ceiling. There yeah, there seems to be some ah. kind of sculpted st stalactite. Maybe it's part of the rock. Maybe not. Maybe it's been made by hand. But anyways, it, it encapsulates this giant ruby and it's shining. It's even emanating light. So this entire room is kind of blood red glowing off of this ruby. 
<laughs> All right, so this is clearly big enough for my purposes. Um, okay. Uh, that one. And that's when you see hundreds of werebats hanging upside down. Ty Telekinesis Ooh. on the ruby. Do they see uh, us yet? No, I do need a stealth check from everybody. Oh, oh that's not gonna go well. No, <laughs> no like, like the, the oh. moment I, we see all of them, it's like good feelings gone. Green flame blade goes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid. I wasn't trying to be stealthy, and that's obvious 17. from my six. Oh wow, that is weird for you. I got a net you, twenty. You, Oh, but you still, hey! Don't forget, nice. you, you still have guidance, or Kira. Uh, oh, I don't know if a D8 no, is going to help this. It has to be cast every time. No, no, I've got no, the um, inspiration from my, Foley. Yeah, my, my, I, for... I did say guidance. I meant that inspiration. Yes, you have yeah. inspiration gotcha. for me. I know. Well, I'll, I'll give it a try. Let's see what uh, I get on the D8. Freely, however, has a 30. So the moment the light goes out, he's oh. just not there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that brings it up to an 11. Shh. Will, you feel like a sudden uh, 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 bulge in one of the, your bags that you've got on you at this moment as, like, electricity kind of, like, erupts around you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look in my bag to see to see what's moving around. You open the bag, and you find this, weirdly enough, the silver-like uh, bottle. It's a big chalice, and it's got, like, a silver bat its wings wrapped around this blood red vial that's quite large. It's like a, like just a huge amount of what appears to be when you shake it, a little bit of blood maybe, and a little bit of healing potion, but it looks hey. supercharged. There's like flakes in it that look very fancy, like maybe golden flecks. And there's even an electrical current going through this stuff as it kind of like bubbles mm -hmm. up, almost like a lava lamp up and mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All thanks to Skibu One. Thanks. Thank you, Skibu <laughs> thanks, One. Thanks, Skibu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so awesome. Uh, okay. What is so? What, and did anyone have a that's very so bad convenient. stealth check? Or Kira? Okay, so I I, I rolled <laughs> a six, and then I used my bardic inspiration, and I got a five on that. So that that got me up to an eleven. Yeah, they hear you. <laughs> they, they all flap. You see all these, you see a wave of tiny little red eyes all light up on the ceiling at this moment. They just go as they all wake each other up. Whereabouts of the crap caverns, we come in peace. We just require one ruby from thee to save this entire planet. So I, I cast telekinesis on the ruby. Uh, what's the I'm range on to that? distract them? Uh, 60 feet. And it, it oh, can no, carry up, to, up to a huge... I'm not within 60 feet of it? No, no, no. Oh, I thought we yeah. were in the cavern, not far from it. No, it's like a really... Like, it's like a, you know, a natural geographic size cavern. Like, this is just <laughs> immense. So, like, you know, like we're talking so how about... how far away is it? Maybe about 10 stories up. So, I would say maybe... <laughs> Wait, and we can see it. So, from so, so what you're yeah, saying it's is glowing. It's the, the ruby is literally lighting up this entire cavern. So what you're saying is it's within 120. <laughs> <laughs> it's I would say it's about like 600 feet away. Whoa. Oh. Ten stories is a hundred feet. So, you do yeah, not. Yeah, that's so <laughs> <laughs> sixty stories up. <laughs> All right, yeah. We're outside oh, no. again. We're outside. <laughs> This is I'm gonna, um, There's a reason why I dungeon master for a living, okay? <laughs> I'm not an <laughs> can I can I cast mislead and vampire climb up the side of this massive cavern and try to make my way over there? I know that I'm gonna get the attention of these werebats, that and that's okay. Sounds like a good plan. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna try. Okay, so Miss Lee, that allows you to do what again? You say you become invisible and you have an illusory duplicate? It's, yes, and um, I believe I can walk on difficult terrain with Miss Lee. And I, I have spider climb. Yeah, because I'm a dog here. Can spider climb, yeah. And Brim is just trying to get their attention, like literally. Okay. Uh, oh my god, my cat just scared the crap out of me. Uh, persuasion. <laughs> They were like rubbing their hands on a box. I'm like, uh. Ooh, nice. 17. Or, plus. or deception. Deception, actually, really. Because you're trying to be like, okay, look at me, fine. look at me. 17 plus four is a 21. 
Okay. Uh, something about how you're presenting yourself, the shininess of your armor, whatever. They think you're shiny now. And they, all of the bats just start descending upon the heroes of the plains at this We're moment. We're not in the cavern yet fully, right? We're far, far away from them still? Uh, you're so now you just a good time to going out of the empire? entrance, yeah. Before everything goes sideways? Go ahead and roll initiative so we can just get that out of the way. Uh, Will, you already said you're running up the, the thing? Yeah. Okay. So Whittle is on the side of the cavern running up okay. the ceiling. To, to kind of explain, of... Briv just wanted to make sure that these creatures were not like, th that they were actually trying to hurt us before um, yeah, yeah. We, we just blew, blew them to hells, right? So uh, right. that's what he's doing. Okay. But if they're coming to hurt us, then yeah, light this place up. It's hard to tell. They're definitely like coming at you, but they are werebats. So they're probably, there's some dark intent here. 22. Okay. And if you can put that in chat, somebody. I'm keeping a running total. So Orkira got a 10. Um, Penelope? 14. And Alindra? 12. And uh, Whittle? Sorry, what, what were we rolling again? And, well, you went ahead and you, you went first. So, but go and roll your initiative. Okay. And while you do that, Briv? 15. <laughs> and werebats. I'm gonna make each one of them roll. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So that's, a, them. that's an entire whopping six. I got a natural one. Oh my god. <laughs> what, well, what, but your dexterity you is probably first. really good. What's your what's what's your initiative? Two. That is more wild magic though. Oh. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, oh my god, that is what. Yeah. All right. All right so. <laughs> Uh, Freely's going first, and I'll get the initiative in chat in a second. All right, Freely, what are you doing right now? You see, uh, did you communicate to any? You've seen Whittle do this before, so maybe you know, but you hear like scurrying up the wall, and Whittle seems to be just kind of like standing, super cash, like a little too cash. <laughs> do not look con look concerned, Whittle. I shall protect thee. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Briv. I mean, so they're just trying to get this ruby. <laughs> they're descending, so presumably they're within spell range, right? Yes, they are. Uh, I'm gonna drop fairy fire on them, so as many as I can get within 20 feet are gonna light up and start glowing, and everybody else will have advantage on them. <laughs> oh my god, what's is there a saving throw at all? Nope. Oh, deck 16. <laughs> Sorry, deck 16. No, no, I'm, I'm incorrect. Deck 16. Oh, okay. But every one of them in, within a 20 foot radius. <laughs> Oh my god. But Penelope got a nat 20 a little bit ago, right? Yeah, she's had something come through. <laughs> and okay. they are, the bats are on the ceiling, or are they? They're they are descending. Um, one of them got a 20, and one of them got a 1. One of so the groups. How, how far up are they? Are they they're, they're only 20 feet up from us now? No, yeah, but they uh, Oh, sorry, well, go ahead. Well, if they're just, they, they've begun their descent, so I would say... Yeah, they're, they're probably, what, 60 feet away at this point? They're just doing a free fall? Yeah. Because we said 120 feet is the height of the cavern. Uh, well, actually, oh, wait, hang on. Wait, no, this is important clarification because it's going to directly affect what I do. Are they actually 120 or are they actually 600? Because that will affect my They are my not 600 here. feet. No, 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 they are not. Oh. Fairy Fire is a stable location, right? It doesn't move with uh, them. So. Uh, once, uh, once they're hit, it does. Did it? Or is it? I don't you know. think so. I think oh, in a twenty foot. Well, believe it or no. Well, knowing that they're within range, this changes my play. Because as you pointed out, I don't know what Whittle's doing. I do see the ruby. I'm shooting the ruby down with Eldritch Blast. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like chop away at the. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You start ch chipping at it. I I'm mm -hmm. just gonna allow you to start chipping away at it, and that's what you're doing right now. We'll just roll. Uh, roll me a couple. Roll me the amount one d tens. You're not gonna miss this giant ruby section. I mean, that is um, very charitable of you because I could have found a way. Uh, that is going, <laughs> that is uh, 4, 12. Uh, that is 30 points of damage total. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're chipping away. Uh, this is, <laughs> just it's an uh, upsetting smell. Every once in a while, like, it goes through a bat wing. <laughs> like, Freely's just not there, right? And then suddenly just <laughs> like a like, laser blast coming out, shooting at this thing. Yep. All and right. Then, uh, um, and actually, um, since I still can with my bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and drop a hex on any one of them. Doesn't okay. matter. Yep. And that's Briv. 
Yeah. Uh, Bad luck, How many Rift. feet did you move up the wall, by the way? Whittle. Um, You're climbing on the ceiling, it, basically. Yeah, well, with Miss Lee, you can just go on forever and ever. So I'm just making yeah, my way towards the Yeah, but your actual movie. invisible self on the, on the walls. What's your movement? Yeah, what's your movement? Oh, uh, 100. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so... Wow. Okay, so you go up a hundred. You're a hundred feet up the cavern while that's happening. And who was after B Dave? Brilliant. So yeah, these bats are flying right by you. They don't see you, but they are disturbed because they still have echolocation. So they kind of sense that there is something very wrong. Uh, but none of them like lob onto you yet. What are you doing, Griff? Um, I am. So uh, how close are they to me at this point? Just like 60 feet away? Is that what we established? Yeah, let's just say 60 feet. Yeah. Um, okay, I am uh, going to just uh, continue to yell at them and try to distract as many of them as I can. And I'm going to ready an action to attack, um, uh, m m make an attack if any of them enter uh, with within range. Okay, will do. Next. Penelope. All right, Penelope. Is my turn? Yes. Okay. Penelope's gonna try a spell she's never never tried before. Oh, By that already. I mean a spell that Hope has never tried before. I realize I have it. So Penelope's going to cast sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know how this works exactly. I'm kind of confused by it. You have uh, to roll. It's a number a whole... of hit points, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I roll 5d8 is what it says. You okay. can upcast it to get more d8. I, I don't remember the specifics, but it should say in the spell. And then however many hit points that, you know, so if a bat has one hit point and you roll 30 on your, your d6s or d8s or whatever, then 30 bats go to Whoa. sleep. It's that kind of thing. Okay, I got a 39. You got 39 yes. of hit points, and that can only be applied to like one creature or like all, a bunch of creatures. As many as 39 will cover. Yeah, yeah, it goes to the nearest creature and then, yeah. It starts with the creature in that area with the lowest hit yeah. number of hit points. And then, so like if, if there's a creature with five hit points, that creature goes to sleep. And then if there's a creature with 10 hit points, that creature goes to sleep. And it keeps going until Penelope runs out of hit points. Oh, oh man, they yeah. have like 24 hit points. Yeah, one, one of them drops. All right, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> one of them just like. I did a thing. <sighs> one of them just curls just up back on the ceiling. To the ground. Okay. Uh, next. That was fun. <laughs> Delindra. Uh, we have a plethora of diamonds, yes? You yeah. do. I mean, it oh, seems God. that getting rid of the entire group in one go would be the way to go. So. Get some fire, I suppose. Okay. It need to be magical fire. Um. Yeah, I'll just. I mean, I think I can just basically strike a match. <laughs> you strike a match. That's your action. I mean, I want to get it out of the way, so maybe I use my mage hand to do it. Uh. And okay. Light. Yeah, light I was about to say Brib is the out piles there. On fire. But, but he's also fine with this. All right, everyone, raise your hand if you're in the cavern proper. I mean, barely in the doorway. All right, I need dexterity saving throws from all of you. Ooh. DC is 18. If you're within 10 feet <laughs> of Briv, you get a plus four. I got a five. Thank you, because that got me too, 18. Then bless you, Briv. Bless you. <laughs> 23. 23. 15. 23. I'm out. <laughs> Um, before we went into the cavern yeah <laughs> without first but... everyone who fails you take 55 points of fire damage as the entire cavern just erupts in flame you see all of these bats look exceptionally surprised as they just wink out of existence in flame and the flame just kind of travels unfortunately i know how this works uh from life experience the flame, uh, the, a green flame kind of erupts from the single match in Alindra's mage hand and just goes vroom, all the way up and all around and all the piles of various objects are now on fire. And if you saved, you take half that damage. Which is what, 27? Yes. 
and so, I'm resistant, seriously. so I will take half the half. So, so okay. a- Adam is asking this, and this is maybe a little educational moment for our viewers out there. Like, so seriously, the deal is bat guano is very flammable. Yeah, that's yes. why it's the, the, the material component for fireball. Yeah, yep. it's very, 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 oh, very, very were... flammable. I mean, okay. waste in general is high in sulfur and other things that go boom. That that's yeah. why waste disposal places that deal in in literal crap are highly regula- regulated. Yeah. Well, that it's is a, a blind spot in my education. So thank you, everyone. For the more you know, of what I appreciate your recklessness, Alindra. <laughs> but you know, your royalty. Mono. I'm assuming they had a, a chamber pots in your castle <laughs> oh, right. where you were raised. I was not raised in a Whittle, you know this. I was not raised in a castle. I didn't raise you from the beginning. Uh, maybe we have a conversation about that later on. But it, w- chamber pots, the flammable, same thing as uh, guano. Anyways, good job. So, <laughs> so Penelope is burnt to a crisp and falls over. Oh. Freely is oh. very, very bad. Although you're death warded. So you yeah, I was about one, to say, yeah. did okay. it actually bring you below zero? Okay. So, Free, freely uh, flaming, wi- yeah, yeah, sorry, flaming right. wings erupt from your back and you pop back up to one hit point. And no then as, a bon- as a bonus action. <laughs> wow. Well, these, are, these are good. Guess what? Come out, it's like... Guess what's coming to heal you? And and then, and... I'm alive! Yeah. Okay. Things come out of your wings and then more fire ups from Penelope again, and like more of your hair is singed, and it just keeps happening. <laughs> I am alive but very badly burned. There's now mixed with the smell of sulfur and bat guano, where b- bat guano, you figure out what's going to happen to you when you touch it. Um, as a as a bonus th- th- action, th- I'd like to cast Healing Word on Penelope, please. <laughs> you may do so. Go and roll that. Who is next? I'm next. Uh, Penelope. Okay, so Penelope is super burnt. Uh, who else failed their save? I uh, made the save, but I have nine hit points left because oh. Freely Freely got beat up when he crashed the first time to get where he was going. So okay, and Whittle, where are you? How many um, points of damage did we take again, Todd? Uh, I believe it's 27 if you made it. Yep, yeah, yeah. 50, 55, 50. or 27, yep. Sorry, I'm still confused. So I rolled 55, a 5. If, if, if oh, you 55. failed, you took, you took 55 fire damage. Okay. So I... that leaves me a 13. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, all right. That's, now let's that's... take 11 hit points back. Yeah. Freely just says, ow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, well, it worked. It worked. Orkira... There are nothing but burning werebats everywhere. <laughs> are there any? Okay. Orkira is going to just move herself so that she's within 30 feet of everybody. And she's going to say, this is good fire. Don't run from this. And a wave will come off of her. as She's going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Okay. Um, and so everybody is going to get, I rolled like crap, uh, 13 health back. Okay. And then, um, oh, cause that is an action to do that. Okay. Um, although we're out of initiative if all the bats are down, right? That is true. Yeah. So someone fly up there and get the ruby. <laughs> at this point will you are upside down with the stalactites that are hanging from the ceiling as well many a burnt wear bat crispy morsel all around you just on fire <laughs> burning and they're dropping one by one you're able upside down you just saw the big explosion you're not quite sure why that happened but you look up and you see orkira healing everybody I imagine kind of floating a little bit at the same time, and you see all the piles on fire, and you get to the ruby, and you're able to snatch it. Okay. Or Kira, whatever you're gonna do, do it now. Wait, no, we need to get back to the ship. So, yeah, you huh. need to get back to the ship, and I need ten minutes. So we'll... the illusionary version of Whittle seems completely unaffected and still standing there nonchalantly by all of you, and the ruby like pops off the ceiling. What do you do, Whittle? Whistles as she climbs her way down the wall with the ruby in tow. Okay, do you drop the illusion? Once I get back to my physical form, yes. Okay, yeah, you see the ruby just go <laughs> down the wall to Whittle. The hey, illusion Whittle. of Whittle. Can, that can I have is that, downright please? unsettling. <laughs> Here you go. 
I'm gonna take the ruby and I will, uh, as as I take it from her, my hand will touch hers and I will cast Cure Wounds on her at first level and give her eight points back. And when we get back into the ship, uh, I'll do a little bit more. Heal, 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 heal. Thanks, Arkira. Uh, Good friend. I've, I've seen the I'm Phoenix trying. do her thing. I mean, we're gonna have enough time to jump out of here before she jumps down here, right? That's the plan, yeah. But it can't hurt to make sure that you, you're not all uh, half burnt, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I come over, once we're back in the ship, I come over the loudspeakers and I'm like, this is not a drill. Get underground now. We have a weapon that will eliminate the undead, but you must get underground now. And Who is still hurting because I can help? Oh, badly. Ooh, no, I'm, I'm still under 50%. I am so burned, but that yeah. was really impressive. Oh, oh shit, Voss is here. Flower I will... pot. Ah. We, we forgot about thee. I will, oh. Voss, stay here underground with everybody, and I will. Uh, I don't really to... care about my hair, anyways. I was thinking of going bald. Voss hadn't so... gone into the cavern, though. I thought. No, the fire got him. Uh, a little bit. He was bit. with. Yeah. It, yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what would you say, uh, Lauren? Uh, he'll heal for thirteen before we leave, and I'll tell him uh, to stay. And... Uh, freely, how much do you need? I'm under 50%, so but, I mean, I, I could, uh, I, I'm, I'm at 21 of 59 right now. Okay, so I'll just, uh, heal you all the way up. W w what is that? Uh, what's that? 20 or 30, 38. I need 38. 38. All right. Lay on hands for 38 on freely. Okay. Oh. Oh. Alindra and Penelope, how you doing? How you Ouch. doing? I was out of the cavern, so I was okay. Oh, so you're okay? All right. Then, Penelope, I will do a Cure Wounds on you, and I'll, I'll grab you at second level. So, uh... How did everybody get into the... I... Who, who, who else is hurting badly? Uh, take 18, Penelope. 18? I'm okay, because fortunately I made my save and I'm resistant to fire, so I only took a little okay. bit. Okay. Anyone else? Whittle, are you doing... I I could use some heals. Yeah, I'm at 34 out of 68. Okay, I shall lay on hands for 17 with Whittle. That thank is you, all you. that is in my tank. Thanks, Briv. That's much better. And we're back. We go back to... Because uh, we got to pick up the dragon and... Uh, I've forgotten the name of the hedgehog. Uh, Jibbers? Uh, Jibbers. Jibbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you get back to the ship freely. You've made the announcement, and people are actually funneling into the, funneling down deeper down into the levels, and some are actually looking at. Uh, yeah, they're everyone's going down deep into the caverns at this moment. So you Can guys are able to get back to the, the spelljammer. Can I grab a couple of the burnt wear bats? Because I want to make some necklaces out of the teeth for my friends. Okay. <laughs> Can yes. you grab and go? Because we're probably yeah. like. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. Free, free. I, can, I can grab and run. Real quick here, uh, just kind of calling out because we had some ones and twenties there too. Um, that at mm -hmm. one point, for uh, bright Terea sunshine, rolled a seventy for Penelope. Immediately cast detect magic within sixty feet, as if the detect magic spell. And then Whittle from Bardic Gifts, uh, you can converse with a divine power for one minute to draw upon them for insight into your upcoming actions. Oh, do that. <laughs> Maybe talk to the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> or, I mean, or... I'm about to do that. Do you have to do do you have to do that now or can you hold on to that one? It's uh, supposed I... to be a pretty instantaneous thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> instant it's Will suddenly your uh, you see Will's eyes just kind of go bl like blood red into two red orbs. And you sense yourself connect to the divine. What divine entity do you wish to connect to? <laughs> Can you give me um, kind of a couple of choices that would make sense for this story? <laughs> Is it specifically divine? Yes. I, um, yeah, it's divine. Divine uh, power. It has to be divine. Divine power. So you are aware of uh you're aware of the phoenix um you are aware of the blood god <laughs> in your research about vampires that there th theoretically there is some great blood god that uh that that can infect people with vampirism that vampires sometimes worship i want to talk to that god 
you're aware of as I don't want to I don't want to steal Orkira's thunder because the whole purpose is so that they can talk to Paylor, you know. So I'll, yeah, I'll talk you're... to the Blood God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you uh, you summon your. What do you say to the blood god? <laughs> I'm gonna ask them. Uh, wow, I've never talked to any gods before. I don't think, but um, do you know what I'm supposed to do here? I'd really like to help get all of our doubles uh, back to where they need to go, so that we can save this multiverse. And, um, I'm kind of lost. And do they have to help? <laughs> so is it they, just communication? You, you draw upon them for insight into your upcoming actions. Yeah, it lays out all before you. Suddenly you have foreseen this moment. But like, you see, like, almost like blood. You see this big, bulbous... You are in this completely, it's almost like you're in a completely white plane of existence for a moment, and you see this giant moving blob of red blood that's just trans moving and tr changing shapes. And it creates these weird, almost shadow like patterns out of its own blood, showing you the future of like, you need to go up the elevator, and then you get into the spell jammer, and then you fly off to the top of the mountain. And then you see Arkira flying, made out of blood, uh, raising up the ruby and then the phoenix erupts out of the sky itself and you see all you see too much for a moment it just all becomes too much information for you you see portals opening up all across the world and you you see um the dragon winking out of existence you, i will say that you have advantage on all roles moving forward so that Forever? is what happens no. <laughs> Forever. That's it. I'm switching religions. I'll take it. <laughs> it's like, I Give me some of that. Blood God. Blood for the blood god. For the blood god. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> that was really, really weird. Um, so yep. I just talked to a blood god, and there were a lot of images, and they went really quickly. But I think we're supposed to go back up this elevator, get on the spell jammer, and then get back to Orkira, and then there was a ruby in the sky or something, and there were portals all over the place opening up and closing. Um, but and we gotta get back to Orkira. That was the plan. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad so, the blood black I, I would say that is on what we were already gonna do. Yeah, right, great. <laughs> There will be secondary ramifications for talking to the blood god, I promise, in the next episode. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. I imagine uh, for a blood god, there's also third and fourth and fifth ramifications. <laughs> absolutely. You know how to very much repair the ship from now on. <laughs> so you are very attuned to the, the ship as well as it is also full of blood. And I feel like the blood god knows all things that have blood. So you get on the spell jammer. And I believe that's where we will leave it. As the sun has begun setting... And the sea of the undead feel a strange, threatening feeling as if perhaps their days might be numbered. They began trying to pour ac across the walls of Waterdeep at this exact moment as Orkira the dragon erupts out of the mountain, ready to meet them. And that's our adventure. Bye. One last thing does happen, though. You do have a vision, Whittle. And all of you do as some kind of psychic connection connects all of you for a moment, you see mist. Red mist all around you. And it slowly loses all of its color and becomes gray and white. And the mist dissipates. There is a full moon out. And on top of the hill is a large white tree with leaves just beginning to fall. Underneath there is a burial mound and you move into it and you think you hear music. And as you enter the room, you see a wax cylinder playing some sort of song. And you see a dryad, the green skin and black eyes attached to the, the underside of this tree roots. 
off its back, almost like wings, dancing with a lich with glowing red eyes to the music around and around the burial mound. And they seem very happy. And that's our adventure, everyone. Uh, I'm going to yell at him the next time I see him. I said I was going to yell at him the next time I saw him. Well, I've punched him once and shot him once, so not this time. I will just say I'm definitely getting some phantom limb pain in my mechanical arm looking at that place. Uh, the For those wondering at home, the 15th, I am very, very lucky for the fact that my very first date with Megan Kenrick was 10 years ago uh, this Thursday. And so, yeah, that's... Not a vision of our future, I hope, but I will be alive <laughs> with her forever. Uh, I, so. I would be a dryad with Into you as lichdom. a lich. I'd be a lich with you, too. <laughs> it's, ador it's, ador it's adorable that you remember that was your first date. That's adorable. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go around the room. Uh, I'm just going to talk in the order I see people. Lauren Urban, what do you do? And why do you do it? And how do you do it? Uh, and why I'm are Lauren you? Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. <laughs> I, I am the community manager for Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. I do it with the internet and the power of friendship. You can find this character that you've been listening to for the last two hours in Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms right now next to Yay. Alindra and Freely and Briv and Penelope because uh, as we quickly have found out that without her friends, everything goes wrong. <laughs> and Averin, almost our entire squad is in yeah. Idol Champions I now. still yeah. want to yell at him and so <laughs> I, I didn't talk trouble. about him. <laughs> It's like his coat of arms. They still want to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is in Latin. <laughs> someone, someone in chat, quick, figure that out for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Penelope, uh, also known as Hope Lavelle. <laughs> I swear to God, it's forever. Every I will die on my, I, on my deathbed. I'm like, oh, how is Penelope doing? <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle to see all the cool stuff that's going on. Um, I have a very cool one shot coming up on Sunday. Look out for uh, details on that coming up on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen to me play D&D on Attackers of Opportunity, wherever you can find podcasts. Uh, Adam Bradford. I am Adam Bradford, and I'm the CDO at Demiplane. And I am doing a lot of different things right now one of the things coming up is jasper's game day is sponsoring jasper's game week in the first week of may i think some auctions are maybe still open for a little while for some of the tables there check that out raising money for suicide prevention and uh also uh gonna have some upcoming games that you'll be able to play with me dungeon mastering game mastering on demiplane so keep an eye out for that i will start uh advertising that pretty soon uh you can follow me at bad eye adam on twitter and follow the demi plan accounts to see when that is going to happen b dave b dave walter as i say words about things and repeatedly warned sophia that was going to happen so if i find her at the tree now i'm like i did literally everything i could do <laughs> to intervene uh, you can find me somewhere doing something almost seven days a week, wherever fine streaming content is located. But uh, most importantly, it's Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, Black Dice Society on D&D, Twitch, and YouTube. It is uh, episode three is this week. You can still catch the VOD of one and two, so you can get caught up. Take the rest of the adventure with us. And when you said mist appears everywhere, I was like, oh, no. And then you're like, <laughs> red mist. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you were the only one. Yeah. That's probably yeah. fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. no. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Just, just blood. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you did get the, a dark feeling off that particular domain. Uh, uh, Jen Kretschmer. Hi, I'm Jen Kretschmer. Uh, I am uh, on Twitter as at DreamWisp. I am streaming on here as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I'm one of the authors of Candlekeep Mysteries, which is the newest hardcover from D&D. Um, I am also the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide, which you can find in my pinned tweet. Um, I'm an actor, producer, writer. I do all the things. Um, I have a couple events coming up this weekend, 8 p.m. Pacific, both Friday and Saturday. I am doing panels at Flights of Foundry, uh, which is a convention. You can look them up at flights dash of dash foundry.com or dot org looking um and uh yeah i've got some other stuff coming up soon so it'll be a lot of fun follow twitter for the best way to find that information and and you found the person in it's chat who uh, dot org. you found the person in chat who did the the latin right 
Yes, I did. Uh, Rumpus Imperador said they still want to yell at me as Adhuk Rolo Quamant Adme. I think that Just opens right up. A, the I think that opens up the the Book of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's more, more, more <laughs> thematic <laughs> component. That, that's guide to monsters. Yeah, that's what Rakira is um, gonna say to summon the phoenix. Is ad hook volo clamat ad me. There you go. More, <laughs> more thematic that's component. That's the yawning portal. Shows up and goes. I'm writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Kenrick, love of my life, and person who has put up with my my loveliness for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey everyone, I'm Megan Kenrick, and you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Megan Kenrick. Um, and Todd and I come out with a weekly D and D video where I interview him about D and D for a change. Um, also, thank you, Bardic Gifts and Skibu for the uh, wild magic. I, I really like um, the chaos that this helps ensue. Uh, and I am Todd Kenrick. I, I have a channel with my my lovely wife, Megan. We talk about D&D and stuff, and I am uh, excited that she's still putting up with me after a decade. I am your giver of guano, your, guano, your purveyor of poop, and your caregiver of crap. Uh, thank you so much for watching D. <laughs> thank you so much for watching Demi Plane and uh, for letting me dungeon master. I'm so sorry, everyone at home. I don't know what happened. It's my fault. This one's my fault. This one's big, big, big time my fault. So have a great night. Uh, stay <laughs> we safe. Came, we came along for the ride because we love you too. Yeah. <laughs> I love you all. Have a great night. That's it. Later, guys. Good Bye. night.